Hey, what's up, everybody? How's so, it going? Got Landon Austin here. I've got my Landon Austin. Look at this shirt. What? Looks so good. We oh, got our jackets on right again. Here. So in the last video that we did together, we talked about the awkward girl stories. I'm sure many of you saw it. And yeah, and after it. that video, we were kind of talking about more of our awkward girl stories, and I'm just kind of talking about the whole process of meeting beautiful women and how that goes. And how we both get kind of like butterflies in our stomach a little bit every time. Butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's just weird, like why does that happen? And I remembered a really long time ago on VH1, there was this uh, TV show called The Pickup Artist, which some of you guys might have heard about. We both thought that it was really interesting how this group of educators can teach these guys to talk to beautiful women and, and get rid of that, the butterflies in the stomach. And some of the stuff that they talk about is really interesting and it's really intelligent about social behavior. It's a little bit sleazy. Yeah, definitely a little bit sleazy. <laughs> a, little, a little sleazy, but but at the same time, it's just really interesting. Yeah, we we watched a few episodes. Just it's really interesting to see like the human psyche behind these methods. Yeah, and these things that people do. Right. And we just kind of want to tell you about it so that you'd be aware and educate you on what guys are doing to right. meet you. Yeah, it's and it's not necessarily that we like subscribe to all of their views, but at the same time, there's no denying that it's really interesting the stuff that they teach. You might want to know and prepare yeah. yourself for a possible person that's like trying to pick you up. It's playing these moves and playing these games with your head, so yeah. that'd be a good idea to share that with you. Yeah, they literally call it like the game the and game. like how how is your game. So I'm very it, bad at the game. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we're not pickup artists. No. Like definitely but we're not, not we're not womanizers or anything. So the guy that teaches all of this stuff, what the one that has the show, the pickup artist, his name is Mystery, and he has a method called the mystery method. One of the first things that he teaches guys is uh, about peacocking and the peacocking theory. So what what that basically means is just make yourself like stand out yeah. a little bit. Uh, a lot of these guys will like make their hair really big or like put color in their hair or get weird piercings. Yeah, like one of the guys on the show like gets yeah. gauges piercings and in his ears and they they paint their fingernails. Yeah, it's really He wears stuff. goggles on the show and it's I don't know. It's just these methods that guys will do to stand out from the crowd. Right. Like and, a peacock. Yeah, and it, and it is like the more colorful you are, the more attention that you're gonna get if you're going out to like, like they call a social gathering. If you go out to a social gathering and you have like a bunch of color in your hair and stuff, you are gonna probably be a conversation piece and mm -hmm. more interesting than Landon Some and George myself. Some with normal hair. Yeah, like me. Like us. Yeah, so after you've done all yourself up, uh, they tell these guys to go out and just try to start conversations with people in clubs. And by doing that, they say uh, one of the worst things you can do is just going up and saying, uh, like, hi, my name is Howard. How are you? Because you're not going to be very interesting. You're going to have, like, pretty much, it's like a zero value statement because every single person has a name. But if you come up with something, like, really interesting, they call it opening up. Uh, a set of people with a gambit, and a gambit is kind of an opener. A really popular line that guys will use. Th that they use on the show all the time. They'll walk up to a group of girls and be like, hey, did you know there was just a fight outside? Yeah. Did you see that? Even though there's no fight, which, and yeah, it's lying, it's it's sleazy, it's terrible, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you go up and talk to somebody and say like, hey, there's a big fight outside. When and then you make it very much not about you, the guy. You make it about something else so the yeah. girl has her guard down. So she doesn't think that you're hitting on her. She just thinks you're telling her something interesting. Right. And she's not prepared for your next move. Right. <laughs> your, your next big move. You're going like to swoop a, in. Another one is like... Mine now. <laughs> they always say like, Hey, I got a really, a really important question to ask you guys. And it's something really dumb. Mm -hmm. And it's something like, do you floss before or after you brush? So if somebody uses that line on you while you're out, it's pro they're probably doing the mystery method on you mm -hmm. um, because they're just like a funny question and you might be like, oh, I don't know, I guess I floss before I brush. And then all of a sudden, you're like a non-threatening person mm -hmm. and then they will think like, oh, who am I talking to? And then you could be like, Oh, hey, I'm Howard. What's your name? And then all of a sudden, it's like so much smoother, and I get it. I get it. But if somebody comes up to you with a line like that, they're probably trying to pick you up. Right. They're probably hitting on you. Right. And it's not always a bad thing. This is just a, a technique that some guys will use who are very shy and very nervous. And Because, yeah. you know, if a guy walks up to you and says, Hey, I'm Joe, you're going to be like, Hi, Joe. Yeah. What, why, why are you, you coming to talk? And, and it's fine, like if you're out somewhere at a social place and you're trying to meet people, it might be nice if Joe just comes up and talks to you. It will at least take the edge off 
of that meeting. Like it kind of breaks the ice almost immediately. So that's that's what's called a gambit. So the next thing that they teach is uh, what's called a neg, which is kind of a funny word. Oh, really? Yeah, funny. it's it's really weird because uh, what a neg basically is is you kind of poke fun at the person that you're interested in in the group to make yourself uh, possibly a little bit less threatening as what they say uh, as a potential suitor. So if you came up to a group and, and you did your gambit and then you did a name exchange and then all of a sudden you're just like, I really like you. I think you're really pretty. Like, like that's what? that's like a little Get bit away. a little bit threatening. Yeah. So what the, you can do is you can do a neg. And so what that is, you give, give me an example of a neg. Say you're a girl. Okay. And I walk up to you and like, We've been talking a little bit. I'd be like, you know, you blink a lot. Oh, I do? What? And it it kind of gets them off their guard. Yeah. So she doesn't <laughs> really think that I'm hitting on her, but she's like kind of self conscious. I know there's going to be terrible. There are going to be plenty of people in the comments being like, why would you ever do make fun of somebody? It's not that like he thinks that I blink a whole lot. Kind of throws them off instead of coming up and saying, like, oh, you're really you're pretty. You're so pretty. You're, yeah. Because if she's a pretty girl, then she's probably heard that a million times. But yeah. if, the, the goal of that move is they'll try and get you off your guard by kind of insulting you. Yeah, another thing that they do on the show a lot is they'll go up to a group of two girls and be like, hey, are you guys best friends? I can kind of tell because you do the exact same thing, both of you, mm -hmm. like that. And then it's like, oh, ha, ha, ha. like uh, it's funny. Yeah. Say you're talking to two girls and you like this one and you're talking to her a little bit. Well, to neg her, you might say, hey, introduce me to your best friend because that's the polite thing to do. Yeah. You're not necessarily insulting her, but you're kind of getting her off her guard yeah. to where she thinks, oh, he's not hitting on me. He just you know, playfully talking. Yeah, about. and and it also makes it think like, oh, I wasn't polite yep. and, and something. And like, I guess he deserves to know my friend's name. Negging can be a little bit sleazy, and mm -hmm. some some girls probably absolutely hate that yeah. side of the game. But it happens all the time. Like, if you like somebody, like at your school or at your workplace or something, right. you poke fun at them. I will say, for me personally, um, I don't like the idea of insulting a girl, but I like it when a girl's confident enough to, to jokingly play. insult me. Exactly. I don't mind it when a girl nags me. I always think it shows like signs of confidence. Yeah. It'd be one thing for her to say, you're ugly. Whenever a girl jokingly says to me, oh, you're such a dork and she laughs about it or whatever, it kind of gets you off your guard, but it's it's kind of intriguing because it shows that she's confident. And that Enough she to say that. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. And so, yeah. You know that your nose nose moves a little bit when you speak? I like that about myself. Yeah. See, that was a neg right there. Mm -hmm. So after you get into a conversation and you've thrown a few negs so that you're not so threatening to the person that you're talking to, they say that you want to start into like telling stories, mm -hmm. telling stuff uh, about yourself. And there's like a whole section on this, teaching you how to be a good storyteller and how to put in what they call DHV spikes into your story. What's DHV? Demonstration of higher value. Kind of subtly bragging mm -hmm. about yourself, but in a way that it doesn't come across as bragging. Because we've all done things in our life that we're really proud of. Mm -hmm. But if you go into a conversation and be just like, I'm awesome. Yeah, I won like so many gold medals yeah. when I was like doing this I'm thing. Michael Phelps, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go into a conversation like that, it's gonna be like, oh cool, you're bragging. Yeah. But in the middle of your story, if you start telling things about yourself sincerely, interesting and intriguing and then possibly shows that you have a little bit of value. On the show, Mystery gives an example of uh, when he's talking to a really pretty girl, a story that he can say to them to demonstrate higher value. So this could be actually be a true story. I don't even know, but yeah. he says that this has a lot of the DHV spikes in it. Uh, he says that his ex-girlfriend calls him and there's this guy that's tailing her in uh, her car. So he's in this big truck behind her and she's like totally freaked out that she needs to be rescued. Mm -hmm. So Mystery is at this club at like a mayor's, uh, actually at a party I think he says, he's at this mayor's house. Mm -hmm. um, he's performing there. So that immediately means like in the story. He's popular, he's well liked, he's a performer. He's at the mayor's house. Yeah. He's And uh, he's with all of his friends and he says, guys, we need to go and help this this girl right. let's let's roll out right now so they all hop in the car immediately and that right there demonstrates he has a strong community he has friends that are willing to drop anything right then and there to go and support him and he would do the same for them then he drives out to where she is at this like four-way stop sign and he says in his story that he just like plows right into the side of this guy's car and she's she's all scared in her car 
and then he takes out a what was it a pipe yeah and then he bashes in the guy's windshield yeah then he like yells at the guy and he leaves so that shows that he's a protector mm -hmm. of his girlfriend like he's he is willing to protect his girlfriend mm -hmm. and so it's hearing this story like if this isn't true it's the sleaziest thing ever mm -hmm. he's basically lying to right. make himself sound cooler but if it's true that's not a bad story. Like, mm -hmm. if a girl told me a story about like all of these amazing things she's done in her life, or maybe this had mm -hmm. just happened or something, that's a pretty cool story because it has all of these different peaks in, in the story of like why she's cool and worth talking to and right. hanging out, and maybe why she's attractive. It's kind of a subconscious way for a guy to brag and right. tell you these things about himself. Um, in a story, in a fun yeah. little story. If, if you have a guy out there and he's he's doing that to you, you could even call them out on it if you, if you wanted to, if you were confident that enough, would be and, awkward. Be, and be like, why are you telling me all this stuff? I don't that, have any lines. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a DHV. There's also these things called DLVs, and Mystery says a DLV is a demonstration of lower value. So say I'm in a club and I tell a joke to a girl and she doesn't laugh. Well, a DLV would be me saying, Oh, you don't think I'm funny? Oh, I'm sorry, that, that joke wasn't funny. Yeah. Because that immediately shows that I'm not confident, it shows that I'm self-conscious, yeah. and it just shows that I have lower value than... Right, or should. just or just like, what, am I boring you? Yeah. Showing that not very confident in yourself. It's just an awkward moment right. for us. So you, you try to avoid those type of statements mm -hmm. when you're meeting new people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about on my channel, because uh, Landon's going to do some more stuff over on his, you'll have to check that out in a second, is what they call IOIs, which is an indicator of interest. So if after you tell your like DHV story, um, sometimes people will show little subtle indicators of interest actually blinking their eyes a lot or like looking at you or maybe like touching your hair you know that if, if you're you know around, you do this. if you're around a guy and you start touching your hair a little bit it's probably because you like them I don't actually know but that's what lip? they say oh yeah they, that is a little bit uh, of that type yeah, of stuff I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but another one is like a little bit of touching so like if 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 like, oh, that was a really good story or something. Okay, get to know me first. Yeah, so that right there, what was that? that you just That's did? a neg, because so, it's kind of flirtatiously and playfully yeah. joking with her and telling her, you know, Lana, she has to earn this. We're learning so much. I know. I'm just, I'm just kidding. We don't actually, do, we're lucky enough yes. that we're comfortable in our awkwardness. Like, I love my awkwardness. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to do these things and like, you know, I have a fantastic girlfriend that I didn't have to do any of this game right. stuff for or whatever, but meeting new people, sometimes it's really tough for people to go out and talk to new people. So there are benefits to it, but it's also, like many of you probably will say in the comments, it's a little bit sleazy. It's definitely sleazy, but we want to tell you these things because we thought the psyche behind them was very interesting. And we want to warn you just in case you feel these things happening to you. Yeah, so you're and you know how to react to it. Exactly. Yeah. So that is going to be it for my channel. What are you going to talk about over on your channel? Yes. So make sure you click on the link below to go to the video on my channel. We're going to talk about things where how guys will try and get you to jump through hoops to prove that you're interested in him. Also, uh, things he'll say to try and gauge if he can kiss you or not, and other little fun things like that. Yeah. Trying to trying to the, where a guy might possibly try to get you to validate yourself oh, yeah. to him. But anyways, we're going to talk about that stuff over on his channel. Go and check it out and honestly, tell us what you think about this. You can mm -hmm. leave all the comments you want about like, what a sleazy theory or something like that. But until you actually look at it from uh, a few different perspectives, I see the positives and the neg negatives of it. Mm -hmm. they're, they're people, people can go out and abuse mm -hmm. the stuff that we're talking about. And if they do abuse it, that's where like a dirt bag comes into play. And that's why we want you to be aware so you know about these things. Yeah, make sure that you don't get picked up by some dirt bag that's gonna use all these techniques on you and then never talk to you again. Exactly. And, and never call you the next day or, or something like that. So there are benefits to know about it and that's the reason why we're doing it. The more you know. Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you very soon and Landon and I are gonna putting out some music videos very, very soon. Uh, so make sure to go and subscribe to Landon's channel when you go over there and we will talk to you later. Bye. 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 And also girls get it when they talk to guys too. Yeah. Like, how do you break the ice? How do you break that tension right away? It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely human nature, and so we were just kind of talking about that, and um, Luke had remembered he'd seen the show a few years